In this series of videos, what I'm going to look at is the process of creating a reading list from scratch within Leganto. So this will apply if a faculty member submits us a citation list as a Word document or uh, they drop off books at the desk or some other method of submitting their readings other than what we saw before, which was them creating the list in Leganto themselves and sending it to us to fulfill. So this should be a little bit more familiar and closer to our old process because essentially we're fulfilling the whole list. We're not relying on them to do anything. Uh, and this might be pretty common uh, as we get started. Um, so the place to begin in this is uh, usually going to be uh, the fulfillment menu and your reading list menu. So uh, again, like we talked about before, everyone's going to have an assigned to me tab. tab when they open up their reading list and that will allow you to see which reading lists are assigned to you as a staff member to work on. Now the assumption here is that uh, the faculty member submitted the list to work on through Blackboard. So that means they logged into their Blackboard course, they submitted a course reserve request to us, and um, they attached a file instead of creating the list themselves. And in that case, what we would see is that list showing up in your assigned to you tab if it's been assigned to you to work on. Now, if they just drop something off or they just email us a list, for example, then that uh, list never went through Blackboard. It's never been in Leganto before. And that means that we would have to create a course in Alma to attach their reading list to when we work on it. So. We're going to use that process as an example here because it's a little more involved um, and requires sort of us looking at all the steps in the system. So for the learning purposes, um, this will be good to sort of see how everything goes from A to Z. So if you have one of those cases, so you get emailed a reading list, someone drops a reading list off to work on, um, we have to start by creating a course. So we'll go to Fulfillment and then we're going to click on Courses. So again, there's a difference in Alma between courses and a reading list. So a course is a separate entity and it can have a reading list or multiple reading lists associated with it. And a reading list could potentially be associated with more than one course. So you have to keep these, they're two separate entities. A reading list is one thing and then a course is another and a reading list can be associated with a course. And we, so the first thing I'm going to do is create the course, and that's what this video is going to focus on. So uh, I've got a blank form that I have to fill out, and you should have all this information when you get a request. So you should have the course code, so I'm just going to make up one here, and it's going to be called test course, and then the processing department is always going to be Letty Circ Desk, just like that. So that's the what we're going to choose there. Academic department, whatever it happens to be, and whatever the semester is. And then it's also important that we set the start and end date. So this is the period over which the course will operate. So it's taking today's date, and I'm going to say if this is a winter term course that it's going to end April 30th. And hopefully I know roughly the number of participants that might be in this class. So that's all the information I really need to fill out. And the second thing is the Instructors tab. So we should know who's teaching this course. So I'm going to click on the Instructors tab and then add them. So you can look up, and this again pulls from their Alma profiles, so you just want to look up the faculty member here and add them as an instructor to the course. So I'm going to add myself in this case for this test example. And you can see now that um, my name has uh, been added. So I've got basic course information in, I've got myself added as the instructor, and I'm going to hit save. And now you can see that this course that I created, the test course, is available uh, in the course list in Alma. Now again, if the faculty member has started the process in Blackboard and submitted to us from there, then we won't have to do this step. Right, because um, their course from Blackboard will already be in our system when they make that connection. So we can sort of skip this step in most cases, hopefully. Um, we're just going to need to do this in cases where a faculty member is not starting in Blackboard and they're submitting something um, uh, another way. 
So after that, uh, I've got a course here. And what I can do is click on this little menu item, and then I want to move on to working on the reading list that I'm going to build for this course. So if I click reading list, you can see that there's nothing associated with this right now. So what I want to do is click this button that says add reading list. And again, um, it's going to ask us for some information. As a general rule, what we'll do is make sure the name of the reading list matches the name of the course, just so it's straightforward, or the code of the course, I should say. So I'm going to call this AS1000W2019. So make sure those things match so there's really no mistaking uh, uh, the connection between the two of them. The due back date. Um, so this is basically setting a timeline in which the list should be created. Now, since we're building the list, we don't really need an internal timeline for this necessarily. Um, this is more if we had uh, been wanting to communicate with faculty members that they have to do something by a certain date. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So I'm going to hit add and close. And now I have a reading list that's uh, connected to this course. So that is basically it for the Alma piece. So what we've done is we have gone to fulfillment and courses. And if the course does not exist already, so suppose that, again, this is something someone has submitted to us from outside of Blackboard, outside of our, uh, the system, then um, we're going to have to create the course for them. I, we're probably not going to need to use this all the time because if someone submits through Blackboard again, it is going to automatically populate that course for us. So the next step, and ne what we'll look at in the next video, is how to actually fulfill this list in Leganto now that we have a course and a, uh, a list re ready to work on. And that process is just going to begin by clicking uh, View in Leganto. But for now, uh, that'll be it for this video.